Hey Internet, my name is Abby and we are back with our round trip all around Kerbin with a sp airplane. So let me climb our back again into the cockpit and yes, here we are aboard. Now let's retract the ladder, start our engines. Oh no, I won't start the engines right away. At first I want to switch to the orbital map because Kerbal Space Center is in the night time um, currently and I want to fast forward a little bit in time so uh, we can do our fly back home uh, during daylight. So let's move on a bit because I want to have the um, most time of our flight during daylight and um, not being flying through the darkness which is a little bit more uninteresting for uh, watching these videos because well um, you won't see very much during this flight okay we've almost reached the um, the rise of the sun with Kerbal Space Center so I think we are ready to go. Additionally we have here our flag from our test flight with the uh, Polar Explorer. I want to use it as a target to have my improvised n radio navigation and now we are good to go. Let me uh, start the engines and release the brakes and yes let's throttle up and hopefully we have a good takeoff again so we can do our flight back home to the Kerbal Space Center. Okay, this was a really short takeoff. Let's uh, retract the gear and start climbing up again as usual so we come to our cruising altitude and can proceed at a very high um, velocity and do our final leg of this round trip all around Kerbin. Um, yes, so um, as we see some uh, mountains coming up in at the horizon, my next plan, as I said, is the um, development of a space plane. I was thinking a little bit uh, about it and uh, well I come to the idea that I want to reuse most of the parts of the Polar Explorer but um, I want to change a little bit uh, things because I want to remove these wings over here and um, install more of these um, canards, standard canards or maybe also the, the, the improved canard and uh, have a slightly thinner aircraft or a better spacecraft than um, this uh, type of polar explorer because this is really looking good as an airplane and um, might be also good for flying into space if I add some um, real rocket engines to it but on the other hand up in space we don't need uh, so much control surfaces we don't need um, so much lift so I will only have um, enough lift to take off and fly and climb up to the altitude where I will use the rocket engines and finally climb up to an, an orbital altitude so um, yes this is my current plan I will try to uh, improve this design of the Polar Explorer by removing a little bit the, the wings and adding some more canards or some other wings. I'm not sure how this will look out. And I will also uh, do some test flights or I will do some test builds if I'm even able to um, take off this, um, these canards or if I have to use these wings to have enough lift to take off. So um, yes, the next episode will be a little bit about testing and um, testing things out and seeing what we need to have enough lift to take off and to reach the um, the altitude of becoming uh, a space plane so we are entering space and yes so much about that I have some some ideas as I said I have already um, done some some uh, first constructions and I'm not sure if they are good or not because I hadn't the time to do a test flight but um, I'm really looking forward to my upcoming space program because I am really looking forward to enter the space with uh, some space planes and discover even more than just flying around Kerbin or flying up to the poles. So yeah, um, I think we will have some interesting test flights in the near future. We will have some maybe unsuccessful flights. I'm not sure uh, how successful my designs are 
and from this point on we will um, continue and improve the design so we can um, so we can um, reach our goal and uh, have a first orbit and or maybe uh, fly up to the moon and have a robot there. I'm also thinking about because I want to land um, on uh, the moon or Minmouth or other planets on my normal gears. So um, one thing I need for this is um, being able to control the the horizontal or the, the vertical movement of my aircraft and uh, and oh, I am almost reached the the altitude. So let's throttle back down and start climbing. I want to have a flame out of this high altitude. While I was talking so much, come on, stop climbing up. Okay. Now, now we are safe. Okay. Let's throttle up a bit. Um, okay, where was I? Yes, I want to um, um, do a landing on my on my gears of my um, space plane, and so I need something to being able to control the the vertical movement of my 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 space plane. And I'm thinking about adding this um, this docking this do docking adapter that is into some. Uh, this is good for space planes. I'm not n I'm sure how it's called right now in the um, BAB, but um, it's looking like the fuel tank, and uh, we can open it. So um, it's looking up and coming out of the um, cowling, and I want to use something like this. Put it um, hit beneath the cockpit or so. So if it's um, pointing in the upward direction, and I use it to click on to control from there. I hopefully able to um, use the thing to control my vertical movement and have a um, gently landing on my um, on my gears without having any trouble of braking or doing other things with the main engines. Um, for this approach, I will also um, add the the tiny engines. I'm not sure how they are called, the tiny Rocomox engines I can add everywhere around my aircraft so they are pointing in the vertical direction and I will only use them for my landing approaches on the moon or on Minmus or something like this. And I'm really looking forward um, to try the things out if I'm able to um, do a landing like this or not. And I need the... the inline docking port. I, oh yes, I think it was called inline docking port. I need the inline docking port because in the current configuration um, the game or the nav ball works only in the, the horizontal way and I need something to have an indication for the um, vertical way because if I'm now trying to um, to land vertically I want I will land on my engines and that's not what I want. I want to land on my gears, so I have to improvise something um, which I can use to switch the nav ball. And I'm coming up with the idea of using the inline docking port, and I hope so, and I hope that will um, be working fine. And I can do um, what I'm thinking about this and uh, have a gently landing. But um, that's a thing for the near future when we are able to reach the space and establish an orbit with our space plane. Uh, this is our main goal for the next episodes because, uh, well, if we are not going to space, then we also don't need any uh, mechanics to control the nav ball and to um, being able to, um, to to do a landing vertically with our space plane. Yeah, so much about that. I'm really looking forward to this. And I'm also looking forward how this design will work out. Okay, we are making good progress here. We are making good ground. Let me switch again to our uh, co-pilot Kirk Kerman and have a look from high above to the surface and enjoy the the mountainous region beneath us, so we can here yeah, enjoy our round trip around Kerbin and see all the different landscapes of this beautiful planet. And um, yes. 
enjoy our our round trip around Kerbin in three episodes. As I said, enjoying the, the beautiful landscapes. Yesterday I was watching my previous episode, so the first leg and the second leg of my uh, round trip around Kerbin and um, I really enjoyed this by following the change of the terrain beneath my airplane because while I'm flying here I'm more uh, paying attention to my altimeter and to uh, pay attention to my speed that I'm not engulfing in flames and I'm thinking about topics I want to talk to and about so I'm not so much paying attention to the beautiful landscape because I have to monitor so much so many other things like I said the altimeter and the speed and um, thinking all about things I want to talk about so I'm not able to uh, see the beautiful landscape um, as you do when you are just watching the video so um, yesterday I was enjoying my videos and it was pretty much what I wanted to do with these videos because um, I see over time the changing landscape at first I came across the ocean then I saw the desert region after the desert region I saw some um, some grasslands or highland then uh, we came across a mountainous region then uh, we approached our first um, first landing and we see this, this narrow um, landscape between the oceans um, and the the um, it was full of lakes and so on after an our second flight we came across additional interesting landscape we came across more mountains and it was just interesting uh, to see how the landscape of Kerbin is different and how it changes over the time of a round trip around Kerbin. Another thing I recognized during this, uh, during this uh, video session I had was uh, as I see uh, that we can see the um, that the Kerbin or the planet is, is a real ball and it's it's a round thing so um, yeah you can see see here the um, that it's it's um, not a clear um, even horizon but it's starting to become more a curve of a horizon and this is indicating that we are on a real planet and it's a round thing so um, this is also a thing that uh, some of the um, the pilots have mentioned there that we are flying in high altitude and I think it was also uh, mentioned um, around with the Red Bull Stratus thing uh, with, with uh, Baumgartner as he does his high altitude jump from 40 kilometers or what was it, 120,000 feet or so or I think he was even higher, 130,000 feet or so. And yes, I think they reported as well that at this point or this altitude they can start to see that the horizon is not a, um, a line that, uh, but it starts to become round and you can see that's, um, um, that the earth is round. So um, yes, this was also an interesting thing and it was interesting to monitor as I uh, watched my descent for the first landing leg. Um, as we descended down it was um, and we are coming near to the surface at some point it was just the the clear horizon it was even it was no um, no round no roundings of the horizon so yes it was pretty interesting how um, good the the graphic engine works and how you can see these different things um, by changing your altitude from only a surface to an altitude of 20 kilometers. So um, yes, it was really impressive to see this and I um, really much enjoyed this to see the beautiful landscape of Kerbal Space Program and also enjoyed the, um, yeah, the possibilities we can experience here by playing that game. This is one thing I'm really enjoying all the time um, to have all the great experiences. That brings me to another topic I want to mention. Um, um, I want to talk a little bit about the Kerbal Edu project. It's um, a project initiated by Teacher Gaming. They have already used Minecraft to um, bring Minecraft into classrooms. They added some some tools to Minecraft. Some some uh, mods and they have also uh, um, 
Minecraft Edu Wiki where they show some some ideas what they can do. So they are doing some history crosses by letting people uh, letting the pupils experience ancient um, ancient um, landscapes or ancient buildings, or they are using it for the geography geography courses where uh, students are encouraged to uh, draw maps using Minecraft so they can explore the Minecraft um, landscape and draw maps from this and so they introduced how um, how real world maps are um, produced also um, the the redstone redstone things you can build some some switches using redstones and um, so people pupils are also uh, introduced to to some getters so uh, nand getters and nor getters and whatever getters there are and it was it, it, it's a cool project and um, yes teacher gaming has also approached um, um, squad so um, squad is helping teacher gaming to start their new project Kerbal Edu to bring Kerbal Space Program into classrooms and to allow pupils to experience the um, how an aircraft is working out, why an aircraft is flying, how rocket designs work, what um, what rockets are doing, um, how rockets are flying, um, and what's all about um, space travel. So I think it's a really cool project and it's a great thing that uh, Squad is so um, supportive and helps teacher gaming out to realize the uh, um, Kerbal Edo project. On the other hand, um, Squad can also benefit from this because if you're uh, um, giving Kerbal Space Program to the hands of pupils, you can also think about pupils are the um, upcoming generation for future gamers and if they are introduced to this game and they are um, they are giving their own opinions of the game, Squad can adapt their um, program and can improve Kerbal Space Program even more and add even new things to um, also the younger player base of um, of this of this game. So I think it's a cool project and uh, mostly I'm liking the thing because um, I really like using. Um, video games to to teach something or to learn something that's also why I am doing these um, these these explanation videos about um, real-world aviation um, in Kerbal Space Program by using here my airplanes and explaining how um, um, navigation works in aviation or how you can do um, what have I done how can how you can do the air the airfield traffic pattern or um, what else is interesting about aviation so I really like to do the same thing so that's why I'm also talking so much about um, my interest in my interest in aviation and um, seeing that um, also um, other other projects are want to take advantage of Kerbal Space Program to educate someone um, is a real cool project and I'm pretty much enjoying the this whole concept so um, yes I'm I'm really looking forward to this and I hope to see more about this um, Squad had during its um, had last week um, uh, um, ask your us ask us everything Reddit um, Reddit event. I posted there also a question. I want to know a little bit more about the Kerbal Edo project because I was so uh, I'm really interested in this project, but unfortunately, Squad hasn't answered this question. So, so um, yes, I don't know um, much more about this project than it was covered uh, by other um, by other um, coverages um, like and so yeah. Um, that's a little bit unfortunate and um, well it's, it's sad that I haven't got any answer to this but uh, well I'm still looking forward to this project and yes um, we just have passed by our flag down there at this little island so that's time to switch our radio navigation um, to the KC NDB at 
the ground so let's uh, set us as a target so we can use the KC NDB for navigation and find our way back home because now we are flying high above the the ocean and um, well as I explained to you flying above the ocean you don't have uh, much uh, you don't have much um, reference points because you don't see the the surface you don't see any any um, good reference points you can use for navigation and that's good to have some improvised navi uh, radio navigation so we can um, fly towards our our uh, Kerbal Space Center and have a gently landing over there and finish our um, round trip around Kerbin. So yeah, so much about that. Um, yes, where was I? Teacher gaming. Yes, I'm really enjoying this game and um, or this this project and uh, I hope this will uh, end in a really good success. And um, yes, so and I also like to know more about it. So it was uh, unfortunate that I'm haven't got any answer to my question but well at some point we hopefully will see more about this project when maybe it goes live and uh, we get more information from teacher gaming and uh, can read some more about um, this project so yeah so my this is also a really cool thing and um, I'm really looking forward to hear more about that Okay, um, what else? Um, we are approaching our our goal of coming back to the Kerbal Space Center. I am also looking forward for my upcoming space, um, space plane project. I'm really uh, hoping it will be a good success and it will uh, ha make some, some fun and a lot of fun because we have to find out more interesting things. Um, I'm using the space, uh, this airplane now for for quite a long time. I was flying with this almost this configuration to the North Pole. I was using this configuration for my South Pole flight, and um, so year um, I'm really looking forward. And I oh yeah, and I used this aircraft configuration for this round trip. So I'm really looking forward to do other things like having a space plane and fly high up into space and establish an orbit and discover the other celestial bodies. Yeah, uh, what about our fuel consumption? We've almost used half of the fuel of our uh, aircraft, so I think this um, aircraft is still able also to fly up to the North Pole again. But I won't do this yet, yet again because I will do this maybe in a later version of Cable Space Program if we get some upgrades to the um to the space planes and airplanes but or if we get some upgrades in the landscape of the north poles or the polar regions and right now i'm i have done all my flying around Kerr, um Kerbin and so that's good enough and i'm looking forward to have some um, new projects and new things oh i think over here the the uh, white line might be our runway of Kerbal space center and Maybe we are lucky and the lights are switched on, or maybe we are haven't uh, luck and because the sun is rising over, over the horizon, we don't see any any illumination of the runway. So yeah, uh, we are now coming in towards um, Kerbal Space Center. My plane again starts to engulf in flames. I think it's really hard to fly at this high altitude without letting my aircraft engulf in flames that's um, really a challenge to to have a stable um, flight level okay now we are approaching our our Kerbal space center uh, what else so yeah i'm um, i'm really looking forward to these projects my own project and the Kerbal edu project and um, Yes, now I'm running a little bit out of topic, but that's not sad or bad because we are approaching our um, our Kerbal Space Center. We are coming back home, and um, so I'm I can start in a short amount of time our descent back to the surface, and we have officially finished our round trip around Kerbin within three episodes of my Let's Play series, and. 
I was really enjoying this project. I had so much fun doing this. Um, and I was also enjoying this project, as I said, as I watched yesterday, all my videos about um, I have done so far during this project because it was so uh, interesting seeing the, the landscape passing by beneath me and um, and seeing it change the uh, changes over the the time so yeah it was it was really cool i enjoyed this and i also enjoyed the the whole flight around Kerbin and um all the other things and so yeah i uh, for me it was a lot of fun and i think i will rewatch my own episodes as well because well as i said i am really enjoying um this this um uh, the series of, uh, of my round trip around Kerbin and I'm proud that I was able to do uh, the whole round trip around Kerbin and um, it, that it was a success and yeah so um, let me let me finish our our final approach let me descend back to the surface and hopefully have a good landing at the Kerbin Space Center so we can finish our project and can um, looking forward to more and good uh, projects in the in the near future uh, future as I said with our um, space program okay I have I have descended to six kilometers and still descending um, let me throttle up a little bit more so we can um, fly towards our NDB and um, turn there into our final for the runway 09er and have our successful ending of this this round trip. So yeah, uh, what I think I I should stop making of new topics because now I'm at the final approach. I will just thank you if you have watched the whole round trip um, around Kerbin and I hope you enjoyed it as I do because as I said it was for me a really cool project. I, I love to do this. I, I love that I have logged all the progress and that everything works out so well. We have a lot of fuel left in our aircraft. Um, we have oh, the, the these tanks are still have some fuel and the inner tanks are still good so we haven't used any of the inner tanks of my aircraft that's also interesting to know that I have built a very efficient aircraft and uh, my my altitude um, seems to be also very efficient um, as I fly very high and at a higher speed so I haven't used uh, I haven't had that um, huge fuel consumption and this was able to uh, save my fuel so I was able to do the whole round trip and I think in this configuration I might be also able to fly up to the North Pole again but uh, well don't be afraid I won't do this I just want to finish off the thing and start looking forward to um, new things to discover and new things to do yeah As I approaching, as I'm approaching here my NDB, I also want to um, mention a little bit that I really enjoy to make my my um, my flights as a live commentary because I think it's add a little bit more uh, interesting features to the game. Well, um, as I'm flying only in a high altitude. There isn't hap happening so much. I was just talking about things I have done and uh, things I am very interested in and so on. But um, I think it's more interesting if I continue with this, even if I'm, especially when I'm looking for, um, when I see the um, upcoming space plane experiences and test flights, because um, it's adding more of my surprise when something went wrong or um, what else will happen. Uh, instead of having um, videos with only post commentary, I watched a lot of um, post commentary Kerbal Space Program um, episodes, but I mostly find them uh, rather boring than interesting because, as I said, I saw what uh, what they did, and this was not so interesting to me as if I watch episodes with um, live commentary. 
and uh, something about navigation right now as we came across the the um, Kerbal Space Center NDB. I um, know that I was sure that I was at the center line of my runway. I turned at this point to the 90 degrees mark and entered through the center line. Now I'm on final approach of the runway. And this is also a good use of um, radio navigation because now uh, I was sure that I was um, aligned with the with the runway and with the center line and um, I know I knew if I would turn at this position I will be able to um, align myself with the center line and um, have a gently landing. So I used radio navigation also for my final approach of the um, runway and to finish my my round trip. Now um, because the whole trip um, was such a long time, let me also take some time to hopefully manage to turn this aircraft a little bit around. I want to park it somewhere out here um, and let it standing there as a, as a memorial for our successful round trip around the planet of Kerbin. I was enjoying so much. So let me yeah, let me uh, do the parking over here. Come on, taxi a little bit further. And now we are t uh, taxiing towards the parking position of our aircraft. And yes, I think that's a good spot. Now let's brake, engage the brakes, switch down the engines. We have still a lot of fuel in our aircraft. Switch out um, SAS, switch out the lights extend the ladders and um, let's plant our final flag because we have to do this to complete our uh, mission our round trip oh i had to wait until the 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 ladder is fully extended okay let me run over this this green spot over here to plant our flag and to finish off our uh, our round trip um, i hope you enjoyed this video series i hope you liked it as i do i hope you enjoyed it if you do so, please become, uh, please like my video on YouTube. Please um, leave me a comment what you are thinking about my round trip. If you enjoyed it as well as I do, and also I would appreciate if you become a subscriber to my um, YouTube channel. And yes, so much about this. Now let's add a site name. Final leg. Final round. Final. Kerbin round trip leg, not leg, leg. Zabi and Kirk did it. Okay, we finished. And as I said, we did it, I did it. I would appreciate your uh, like and your subscri subscription and your comment. My name is Zabi. Until next episode, when we experience our space planes, see you. Thank you.